and read it from 1 Corinthians 5 verse 6 from the Lord, but I have it out to you that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this beautiful morning. Today's Mass has been offered for Anne Marie Suckman. And uh, we have the beautiful story of the Ethiopian owner uh, that Philip baptizes and explains the scriptures to. So as we come to celebrate the Holy Spirit active in our church, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, and in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Anne-Marie Stuckman. Almighty ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when by your gift we have known it more fully so that those, who have, those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, 26 through 40. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian, Yuna, a court official of the Cadence, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in this, his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his prosperity? For his life is taken from this earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you about whom is the prophet saying this? About him or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with the scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to water, to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water. 
and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came down to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to Psalm number 16. 66. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God. While I declare what he has done for me, what I appeal to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God who refused me not my prayer for his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to him, comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading today, we see the activity of the Holy Spirit. And we should never forget that the Holy Spirit is active in all people in the world. I was thinking this morning, very often in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is compared to the wind. And if you look out, you'd never know how windy it is until you look at the trees of the shrubbery and the way it is blowing, or if you're outside, it's really windy. And, and you know, sometimes we forget that the Holy Spirit of God is a powerful force in work, in the wor in working in the hearts of every human being, not just in the church. The Holy Spirit is given to everyone, and everyone is a potential saint. Everyone can be saved because of the working of the Holy Spirit and the merits of Jesus Christ. So we should never forget the great gift Jesus Christ has given us, the gift of the Father and the Son in the Holy Spirit. And in the Gospel today, this is very powerful. You know, when Jesus says, Amen, Amen, it really means, pay attention, pay attention, this is really, really important. And he says, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate man in the desert. Does anyone know what manna means? The word means, what is it? What is it? So the, that was the bread that they eat, the mysterious bread. And the Eucharist is very much the mysterious bread. The Eucharist is Jesus Christ. And whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus designated the bread and wine at the Last Supper as his specially located presence until he comes again. So when you come to Mass every morning, you get to receive Jesus Christ 
body, blood, soul, and divinity. And it's an awesome gift that we get every time we come to church. And I love the internet. I love uh, like YouTube and all those kind of videos. But there's some great ones on the Eucharist that I would love everyone listening to this and everyone here to, to look at. Like, like Dr. Brian Petrie's talks, The Jewish Roots of the Eucharist, Jesus and the Jewish Roots of the Eucharist. Peter Kraft's talks on the Eucharist. Uh, the, the Scott Hahn has some great talks on the Eucharist. And, and so many more. So, so, so try and encourage former Catholics and inactive Catholics to get better educated on the gift we get in the Holy Eucharist. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for Aunt Marie Suckman, for whom the Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So many people have requested prayer. We lift up in prayer all those with special needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continued success of our pod process, and we pray that more and more people will join the process so they can be better educated in our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For former Catholics, for inactive Catholics, may they come back to Jesus Christ, the living bread come down from heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the people working on the construction of our new church, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for sinning as Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. May we always call upon the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hand, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in the sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord, ye at more glorious day, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. St. Basil, the great born of the year 330, has a beautiful quote on the Eucharist. He said, To partake of the body and blood of Christ is good and beneficial, for he says quite plainly, He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Who can doubt that to share continually in life is the same thing as having life abundantly? You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time
time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, Amen, Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and save from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you to my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and leave those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated now for me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The beautiful story of the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts has many curious questions for us. Perhaps some can be answered today. This foreigner was already a God-fearer, meaning a Gentile who believed in Yahweh, Israel's God, hence was in Jerusalem to worship Israel's God. He was reading the prophet Isaiah in the 53rd chapter, being drawn ever more deeply into the religion of Israel by the suffering servant song. Philip led to this place and this person by the Holy Spirit, reread the passage to him in terms of Jesus and his death on the cross, which so touched this guard fearer that he asked for baptism and thus became a Christian. I can feel the confusion in this man's soul as he read Isaiah, and when Philip, deacon in Christ's new church, filled with the Holy Spirit's fervor, heard his pitiful voice begging for understanding, he was gloriously able to solve his, <clears throat> his uh, confusion and tell him about Jesus, our Savior. What more direct a description of God's planning human lives, this court official's life, our life, than this story? Pulling, yes, pulling Philip away from whatever he was doing and directing his every movement so as to be in the right place at the right time to share his faith with someone, not even of his own country, a foreigner. And then, just at the right moment, water. And remember, it was on the desert route, as Luke said, water. What would stop me from being baptized, pleads the sincere official? Nothing, nothing at all. And Philip, overjoyed at bringing a new Christian, a believer in Jesus, into his church, baptizes him two faith-filled believers in the middle of the desert. And don't you feel for the driver of the chariot, who obviously heard all this and could very well wish he too could jump in and join them? Well, we all have our own uh, confusions, our Isaiah, and we have our own water. It's just up to us to be uh, disciples of Christ and jump right in. Thank you. Amen. Very, very good, May. Thank you very much. Got a cute email here. Inside the bank fall, the various denominations of money began to discuss the place they'd been. The $100 bill said, I've been to Tokyo, Paris, Dublin, Ireland. The 20 said, I spent a lot of time in Las Vegas and in Atlantic City and the casinos of Biloxi. The one meanwhile said, I have traveled from, the one dollar bill said, I've traveled from church to church to church. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with you, sir. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching, thank you for being here. Go in peace and make disciples. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and the kingdom of the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and we shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, this is our cross of the faithful. Granted by the same Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in this consolation through Christ our Lord.